Welcome. Hello. This is Wendy Rose Williams, and I want to welcome everyone to the Waking Up Spiritually podcast. And I'm here twice a month on the second and fourth Sunday of the month at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern with my co-host, Greg Kirk. And you're able to join us live via our Waking Up Spiritually Facebook group, or you can join us via Zoom. And we also record and archive the programs on the Waking Up Spiritually uh, website. So those are the places that you can join us either live or uh, later via the recording. And I'm a past life adventure guide. And what I mean by that is it's my pleasure and privilege to help people release energy that doesn't serve them anymore so that they can move into a much happier, healthier life and one that's filled with purpose because that is just so satisfying that to feel that you're living your life purpose. And examples of energy that does not serve us anymore is pain, anxiety, and depression. Um, those are uh, three of the top, top three things that I help uh, people release as well as stuck creativity. And I'm a certified spiritual teacher as well as past life regressionist who trained with Dr. Brian Weiss, among others. And I'm also a Reiki master energy healer and an author. And today's topic is, uh, actually I'm gonna let Greg introduce that. So let me introduce Greg Kirk, um, my partner in crime here. Yes, I'm Greg Kirk. Uh, I am an energy worker trained in Reiki and Theta healing and some other modalities and some of them I've actually developed and begun uh, helping train some people actually who are in our group here, waking up spiritually. So I use tuning forks, um, energy healing modalities and as for in-person sessions. And then I also um, do remote sessions and they do the range of it similar to what um, Wendy described is we, only I, I define it as we look for blocks, blocks to your advancement, you know, or blocks to your health or blocks to your uh, happiness. <laughs> so, um, and these things can be a number of things that sometimes you experience a trauma in a past life. Sometimes you have experienced an early trauma in this life. Uh, sometimes you've experienced a physical trauma. Uh, you've gotten in a car wreck or had a concussion or, you know, had a sports injury in these, or even just had a, a successful surgery that um, there's still some trouble in that area. And that's, you know, that when that's considered a trauma, a, sur right. a surgery, even a successful one. So anyway, the, this is what, what I do and um, with the help of your guide. So I, I'm not actually the one doing the healing. I'm more or less the narrator uh, and bringing the focus to, to the healing. And you can uh, contact me at gregkirk.com. So that's G-R-E-G-G-K-I-R-K. Um, I also run something called the Lyme Recovery Clinic. So I help patients of chronic illness, especially Lyme disease. Um, so LymeRecoveryClinic.com. I do some uh, energy healing there, but I also help with uh, herbal treatments, so physical healings as well. So anyway, uh, that's uh, long, this is, I think this is the longest we've uh, taken to inter introduce ourselves, but you know, <laughs> maybe you know, some people need to know it. So uh, the topic for today is something um, that is kind of pivoting from some things that have been coming up recently with the changes in the world. Um, so I think everybody who's watching this video now has, has been drawn to the video because you are waking up spiritually or you already have. Um, so how do you stay awake? <laughs> how do you keep your vibration high? And the topic today is raising your, vi raising your vibration dot, 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 and keeping it there. So, hey, it's one thing to get to the mountaintop, so to speak, or it's one thing to actually feel like you've um, woken up um, and maybe you've had some supernatural experiences or experiences that are hard to explain. And you've gotten that feeling, your connection to source energy, to God, your uh, religious experience, whatever you want to call it. You've, you've had that um, experience where you felt, okay, there's something beyond normal life. <laughs> There's something beyond the veil, as some people describe it. And, um, and maybe you've done some things, some practices that um, have kept you on a higher vibration. But what happens when you fall down? <laughs> what happens with when normal life kind of grinds you up in the gears and you fall off the mountaintop or your, your high ivory tower? What happens then? What do you do to get back up? So that's, that's the point. 
of today's session. So I'm going to hand it over to Wendy to have her describe um, her experiences in, in this regard. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Greg. Well, I, I'm going to share my own, because uh, I had a very conscious experience of raising my vibration to 5D. And what I mean by raising our vibration is simply level of consciousness. So it's just awareness, as Greg said, that there's something bigger. It's kind of like uh, the matrix where you're realizing, oh gosh, maybe we are living in a, in a hologram or a video game. Maybe there is something really, really much bigger and more heart filled. Uh, maybe there is something you know, going, going on and it's just not a matter of reaching the light or going home to heaven when we drop our body. Maybe it's something we can and should be doing now and just being able to incorporate those magnificent spiritually transformative experiences and dreams and just you know whatever whatever moments those blips in time that you've had to say how can i string those together in a more meaningful way um, and then a lot of us get to the point where we're kind of like living two lives um, and, and so again just being able to integrate those so that you don't so that you can truly be authentic and be in integrity and be who you're meant to be and be able to express it uh, clearly and succinctly and not have to um, you know, live the double life of um, you know, the people in the place with the two Facebook pages and well, this is for my, my family and friends because they don't know I woke up, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever that means or they're gonna freak out. So there's like this, a lot of energy um, for people at times of what will other people think and sometimes that's part of our journey is to let that go and look at how that just helps us accept others you know more readily too and just taking all the all the judgments down and just being able to meet each other where we're at so that's how i'd kind of share the background to it sure. what was your first experience that you had where you you had that experience of oh there is something Else. Yes, where it first came up for me, Greg, was in 2010 when I met um, a man on Match who I knew, I knew at a really deep level. And we've talked about that in a previous podcast where we talked about how we woke up spiritually. Uh, so I'll just recap that. I met him and the minute I saw even just his Match profile, not just photos, but how he wrote, how he expressed himself. I knew I knew him and he knew he knew me too. So we were both playing the game, you know, via email and phone conversations before we met. How do I know you? And what it turned out to be, um, we discovered pretty quickly over that first lunch, which turned out to be like three or three and a half hours because we were just so um, connected, was it was past lives. So, and just there were lots of contracts for us to be working together and for him to help me wake up spiritually and to get on my life path and to uh, raise my vibration and frequency because I was living um, just a conservative life where I was just kind of like um, not into, not interested in my spirituality at all and would just say, oh, I don't have time for that or that's not, that's not for me. You know, I'm, I'm busy working and raising my family and taking care of my home and property. And it just it just wasn't landing for me. So it took that meeting with someone and to be able to tell that there was such a connection because we just finished each other's sentences. And I had never had a relationship like that um, where we just were uh, very, very in tune because we knew each other's souls. Right. So, um, so and then go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to, no, you go ahead and finish. <laughs> so finish what happened then, so that was 2010. And then by, so I started down the path of, I really, I started reading. I was reading Journey of Souls. I was reading so many different things, trying to understand, well, there is this bigger picture and there is a spiritual world and energy. Um, and it's nothing to do with 
with what we're taught in church necessarily. It can be actually the opposite of it in many ways because you really have to look within and take personal responsibility, uh, you know, versus kind of delegating that to someone to interpret for me what the Bible says or, you know, whatever you might be choosing to do with, with your um, religious life. And certainly many people find wonderful community in church and do, you know, lots of good works through it. And that's all fantastic. I'm not, I'm not knocking any of that in any way, but it just did not help me um, spiritually. And that was a different path for me, at least. So starting um, with that, waking up with that soulmate, and I really wanted to get in touch with my guides, because once I learned the concept of higher self, meaning our soul wisdom, um, some call it our consciousness, um, depending if you're more scientifically minded. And I really just loved the concept of spirit guides. That's why we did that as our very first podcast, because so many people are interested in that. So please do uh, jump back into the archive if those topics are um, uh, speaking to you and look for those earlier podcasts. So by 2013, I was getting in pretty good contact um, with my guides and just had had a lot of, a lot of different um, experiences that I was trying to make sense of. And I started to notice that I was having what was called ascension symptoms at the time. And someone actually, and I was working with a spiritual teacher um, for the first time starting in 2013. And I am so grateful for that because I absolutely needed that support and needed that wisdom because my belief system was changing so rapidly and I didn't know what was coming next. And it was really hard to make sense of it all. So it kicked off a lot of fear for me um, because the beliefs were just shedding and shedding and shedding. Um, because that was that's what my path was. That's what I needed. Other people, they they're awake from birth. I mean, they're born into just as one simple example. They're born into this um, lovely psychic family, or they're born into this lovely um, hippie family, and they're just you know really in touch with the earth, or or they're born into um, a native um, type of lifetime where the spiritual beliefs are just part of everyday living and it's just all natural to them. But that wasn't my, that wasn't my circumstance. So I needed that spiritual teacher to help me start making sense of it. And I was super grateful to have her there because I started to feel like, you know how when you like shake um, a can or a bottle of something before you open it because it needs to be, you know, mixed up. Um, and then, you know, you're carefully opening it. And I felt like I was being shaken awake. I could feel my vibration and frequency just going up and up and up. And it was not comfortable because I was just shaking so hard. I felt like my own little internal earthquake all the time. And it went on for a good six to eight weeks with just no rest from it. So I was exhausted. I didn't really understand what was happening. And I just was um, shedding a lot of those old beliefs, as I mentioned. And then what started to happen is I did get more of a sense of my higher self, of my soul. And one of the easiest ways, because aligning with that real me, that true me, um, is just an essential part of being able to raise our vibration and to keep it on a nice steady pace, which Greg is going to talk more about. Okay, once we once we've moved up, how do we maintain and not not fall off, as he said? Um, and I, you can just call your higher self in through the crown of your head. I mean, it's just that easy. I do it every morning when I first wake up, sit with my feet on the side of the bed. I pull my primal self up through my feet and I pull my higher self um, in through my crown. And I'm just more together all day because I'm like really there versus just, you know, stumbling out of the bed and like stumbling through the day. Um, so I just take that, you know, 15 seconds to do that. So I was learning how to align with my higher self and getting a sense of, oh my gosh, there really is something called the soul. And I mean, that was all that reading I was doing and I was starting to have healing sessions with um, people and working with a spiritual teacher, as I mentioned. I also had a uh, Kundalini rising, um, a spontaneous one 
And it was a really big surprise to me because I didn't really know what our Kundalini life force energy is. And it's something that typically, <laughs> a surprise, it's something that you typically um, open slowly in a sane manner. Maybe you're working with a Kundalini yoga instructor. Maybe you're working um, with a Kundalini meditation uh, teacher, but it's something the body's got to be prepared for it. So whether you know that train is coming or not, um, it is just so wise to have a daily spiritual practice, which Greg and I have talked about a lot. And there is a specific podcast on that topic too, as well as we've done two, uh, it was part one and part two uh, podcast on managing your energy, because all these things come into play with what we're talking about today. So what happened with my Kundalini rising and picture, um, picture this, I'm just thinking, okay, I'm just going to do this lovely little meditation because I was starting to get into more meditation. I was not really um, a meditator at that point. I didn't really um, have a practice of it, but I was just starting. And because it had come up during my own past life regression session as the client had come up during my life between lives and the practitioner, as well as my higher self and guides were saying, Wendy, you really need a meditation practice. You've got to calm down that monkey mind. You've got to conquer that fear because you're just all over the place and you're not seeding your energy. I wasn't seeding my higher self in my body. So I wasn't together. I just literally was not together as an energy being. Um, so I see this meditation. I read the Magdalene Manuscript by Tom Kenyon and his wife, Judy uh, Sion, and I loved it. It was so powerful. Um, and I realized looking at his website that there was a companion CD, which was um, him leading you through a Magdalene manuscript meditation to open your Kundalini. And you're meant to listen to it, you know, many times and have it be this slow, gracious process. I think it was an hour recording and it kind of like repeated multiple times. So within two minutes of sitting down, and it was interesting that I was sitting because I was in my bedroom. Normally I would lie down to meditate the few times that I did try and meditate. But for whatever reason, I listened to my instinct, which was to sit. And I was sitting cross-legged with my back really straight. I think I had my back like against the, um, the foot of the bed. I was just sitting very straight, but I was very more grounded than usual because I was sitting in that position. And the minute I started listening to it and Tom was describing, and he's got this amazing five octave voice, he was describing um, the, the snakes coming up your spine and opening up. And I realized very quickly I, I was surprised because I was like, what's going on here? I knew what he was going to say before he said it. And I had already done the steps. So it was just like a train. It was like a bullet train going faster and faster and faster of this energy moving up my spine, up through my upper body. And it just blasted out of the top of my head. And it my crown chakra went wide open. I didn't even barely knew what my crown chakra was at the time. And this took all of 15 minutes. I mean, it was like nothing. And I blasted out of my body as my higher self. And I was looking down at like my house and then my neighborhood and then the world and then like the galaxy. And I started to get scared at that point because I'm like, what the heck? This is like a little too high up. So I went boom back down into my body because I scared myself because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know it was perfectly safe. I didn't know I had control of it. I didn't know that there's a silver cord that attaches um, us to our body. And I didn't know any of that. And when I came down into my body, it was a really hard, rough landing. And it was like, oh, I just hurt all over. And then I'm looking up at the ceiling in my bedroom, and this is the really funny part. I'm looking up thinking, oh my God, there's, there's this huge hole in my roof. How am I going to explain this to my insurance agent? How am I going to get them to pay for this? 
this <laughs> because there's this massive hole because how else could I have like been like seeing all that from up above and I was like oh my gosh but they're gonna see the explosions from the inside going up it's not like something fell on my roof like a tree where I could get them to pay for it I was absolutely convinced for probably a good minute or two that there was a hole that there was this huge huge hole because I could just see it um, and that that was how I'd left my body and gone up. So that was my Kundalini rising. I, and it was a spontaneous, um, Tom Kenyon also had a spontaneous one back in uh, uh, college. And he had such a massive one that it spiked his body temperature in a really unpleasant way. Um, he needed medical help. He had to go to the emergency room and be admitted to the hospital because he was not ready for his either. And his body just went like, whoa, he, he overheated. I, I went flying around the galaxy and he overheated. Um, so I don't say this to um, frighten anyone. I want you to understand it's perfectly natural and normal, but the body does need to be prepared to have this full life force come back to us. And that's what yoga is for. That's what meditation's for. You know, that's what these various spiritual practices are so that you're just um, syncing up your body and your mind and your emotions just in a more powerful way so that you're ready for things like this. And looking back on that, spontaneous uh, kundalini rising i had missed the earlier symptoms of it because i didn't i again didn't know what they were fortunately i'd heard i'd listened to an ainsley mcleod uh, audiobook he wrote um, the instruction and how to heal um, your past life fears and some other uh, wonderful bestsellers and i had um, heard a little bit in that where he talked about kundalini rising and he had talked about like people could be like rocking just um, unconsciously or not wanting to, but like rocking back and forth, whether they were sitting or standing, that that was part of it often trying to balance up that energy. Or they could literally be hissing and spitting. Um, again, it, it's, <laughs> you were not possessed by a snake. That's not what I'm saying at all, but that's just how some of that energy could present. And I had had some of those moments. So, you know, I was starting to go, oh, now I see what this all is and, and, you know, how it's coming together. And I also, a lot of people consider kundalini sexual energy. That can be a part of it, but it's actually, uh, I'd consider it the lower vibration versus the higher vibration. I'm not, I'm not knocking sex in any way. Sex is a wonderful thing. Uh, it's part of why we come to earth and why we want to have bodies. Um, but it is, it is that lower vibration of the kundalini and there's these other pieces that needs to come in too so i was feeling it that way and it was like oh my gosh what's going on here i've got an awful lot of hormones flowing and i i couldn't figure it out i was thinking gosh can this be menopause wouldn't that be hormones calming down not going crazy because <laughs> i was feeling like a 16 year old boy and i could barely put that seat belt on because it was just like just too much um, sexual energy to just go across my breasts. So that is some of the ways that the Kundalini can um, start to present for us. And just ground. It's just literally that simple. Just ground your energy. Just keep grounding because you're raising your vibration up in a really, really significant way. So just keep grounding because then you can rise up um, much more uh, safely and effectively. And the one other way I would describe a kundalini rising to people, if you feel it really rising like I was describing and it's just too much, picture yourself in a skyscraper. Picture yourself in a hundred story skyscraper. You've got control. Just tell your higher self and guides, okay, something's going on. The train's moving a bit too fast for me. I need to hit the stop button just for a day or two or a week or two, whatever's right for you. I need to hit the stop button and get off on the 25th floor. And then I'm ready to get back in that skyscraper elevator and start raising my vibration and letting my Kundalini rise again. You are in control. You're in control of your body and your mind and your emotions and your experience. But a lot of us forget that and we feel like it's being done to us or that we just don't have, um, we just don't have, you know, the, the wherewithal to, to deal with it. 
So those were some of the pieces that came together. I also, as I raised my vibration in 2013 and moved to 5D, I see 5D as the place of peace and love and joy. I see it as the heaven on earth energy and what we came here for um, to experience. So it's just this um, amazing time where we can let go of all the tough stuff and really be holding that vision and that energy to create that so that we make that happen on earth because our thoughts create our reality. So the other message that kept coming up for me back in 2013, as I was like just shaking and shaking and going through this Kundalini and trying to get my higher self really in my body, again, without really having a clue or knowing what I was doing was I kept getting messages, go to the right, go to the right go to the right. I didn't know what that meant. I was dreaming it. I was hearing it. It was coming up in the few meditations that I did. Healers were saying it to me um, and psychics were saying it to me. Do you know you're supposed to go to the right? I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> Make the right choices, be in integrity, literally. You know, what does that mean? What does that mean? So the way what actually came out of that, and it's so fun looking at it in hindsight, but I was so puzzled by it for a couple months, was my higher self was literally a little bit to my right, and I didn't know that. And I needed to align with my higher self. So what happened was, least glamorous task of all, I'm taking the garbage out one night, how symbolic. So I'm trundling these, you know, big cans and rolling them down my long um, 275 foot driveway to put them out at the curb. And I get that done, I like dust off my hands, like, oh, cool, that's done. You know, it's all set for the week. And I start walking back toward my front porch, which I, as I said, it's a long way away, gravel driveway. And I'm like almost to my porch. And all of a sudden, I am a good 10 feet to my right. I am nowhere near my porch. I'm looking at my lamppost going, how did I get here? Because I did not walk here. <laughs> and it felt like I got put, picked up and just like thrown over there. I cannot explain it. And at first I was like, was that an earthquake? Because I was over there and now I'm over here. And, and then I'm like, no, I, there was no rolling beneath my feet like you feel in an earthquake. Um, hey, I've been on the West Coast quite a few years. If you're on the East Coast or if you haven't been in an earthquake, you may not know what that feels like, but there's like a rolling under your feet, like a, like a carpet being pulled out from under you is how I can best describe feeling an earthquake if you're standing. So I'm standing there and I'm just shocked. I'm absolutely shocked. If I could replicate that move, you would pay me as a professional athlete. <laughs> it was just amazing. So I just stood there and kind of gathered my wits and said to my guides, what just happened? What, what, what was that? And they said, oh, you're aligned with your higher self now. We needed you to go to the right. <laughs> it was like, oh, my goodness. Well, that was very dramatic. How interesting was that? And I have an aura photo from that time period. And there was this nice picture of me on vacation at my dad and stepmoms. And I'm standing out on their deck with the lake in the background. And I have this picture. And then I got this offer for purchase this aura software. And we'll show your, the colors of your aura around you. And they let you put in two pictures. This is a demo to get you to um, purchase the software. So I put that picture in. And there was this lovely aura all around me, but it was to my right. It was not around my body. And that was the visual confirm of the information was right. As crazy as this all sounds, I needed to go to the right to align with my higher self. That was part of raising my vibration. So I'm super glad I put the garbage out that night. <laughs> So that was, that was what happened as I was raising my vibration. And then the final step was, and I was exhausted. I mean, I could barely drag myself to work and to, you know, cook dinner for the kids and I, and to do like the basic, basic, basic was all I could do. Cause I didn't know that it was just taking all this energy. Cause I was shedding all this old energy. I didn't need any more, much of it fear type stuff. And I didn't know that's what was happening. And 
the final steps that happened for me to raise my vibration was all of a sudden, it was a weekend um, when the kids were at their dad's house. We did, we were um, divorced and weekends were typically, you know, one house one weekend and the, um, the other house the other weekend. And so I had a lot of energy surprisingly on this one Friday night and the kids had left for their dads. And it's like, oh gosh, I really feel like writing. So I just started working on my book and it was so flowy and so easy. And I knew it was super late, but it's like, well, it doesn't matter. I don't have anything set on my calendar tomorrow and the kids are, aren't here. So I can just do an unusual thing and stay up as late as I want and just keep writing. I wrote until dawn. I have never done that in my life. And I didn't even know it was dawn. And I finally was like, oh gosh, I feel really stiff. I've been in this chair a long, long time. And I got up and stood and turned around and looked out the window um, and I saw the sun coming up and I just, I felt such immense gratitude and love. And I could just like feel my heart just breaking open. And I just loved everyone and everything. And the sun was pouring in on me. And all of a sudden I was hearing a Beatles song and I've, you know, it wasn't physically, it wasn't, phys it was in, it was just downloading from the heavens. And it was like the most heavenly choir I had ever heard of the Beatles song. And let's see, which song was it? It was, um, it was Let It Be. And it was just pouring into me. And I felt like, I felt like I was healing from the inside out. It's, I, it felt like, like a, like a, microwave in the best possible way where it goes from like the inside on out and it was just a tremendous experience and i was just sobbing and i'm like i i just don't know how to explain this experience and i just wished people were there that i could you know share it with but it was just very um amazing so i went to bed and you know took a good good long nap because it got up you know it stayed up until 5 or 5 30 and i felt different that next day when i got up and then I had, and I would consider that a sound activation from source as one of the, can be one of the final steps. There's different ways to raise your vibration, and move to 5D and higher, but this, this was mine. Um, and I did go through one more sound activation. Um, it was another Beatles song and it was in the shower that time. And I just did not want to turn off the water because I felt like, can I like maybe keep this going? Will they repeat the song? Will they do it again? But it again was just like this heavenly, heavenly choir. And I also had transmuted my karma during this time period. Not all of us have karma, but karma can be transmuted by learning the lessons, by forgiving others, by forgiving ourselves, by being in gratitude we absolutely can transmute our karma. It's not punishment, it's just a teaching tool, it's just unbalanced energy we need to balance and shed. Uh, as I said, by, last, by mastering the lesson. So I had done that too by working with a spiritual numerologist. So then all the pieces were in place. I'd aligned with my higher self, I'd opened my kundalini fully, um, should be done in a more safe and sane manner, <laughs> but that's okay, that was my path. I'd transmuted my karma, and then I um, was able to receive those sound activations from source. I then got into trouble. Um, it was not long after that because my body just wasn't ready for it. I couldn't hold it, which is where we're going to segue to Greg. So what happened was I just did the simplest thing. It was a Tuesday night and I went to one of the kids um, sporting banquets. It was um, like um, cross country, whatever, um, you know, sports banquet awards. And I carried in the crock pot because it was um, a potluck and everyone, you know, brought in some food that night. And I noticed my back was really bothering me and really hurting, but it's like, oh, you know, whatever. That, that unfortunately, at that time was still part of daily life. It no longer is because uh, I've healed it. But, you know, I carried it in and I sat and we were in, we were in the, um, the cafeteria because they, they, I can't remember, the auditorium was booked or they didn't have enough room in the auditorium. So we're sitting in the cafeteria 
on those not so great uh, picnic table, you know, no back to the chair, and my back is bothering me more and more and more, and my hips are hurting more and more and more, and I'm thinking, eh, it's a crappy seating, I'll go try and stand up, put my back against the wall for a while, change my position like you would on an airplane or something, because you've been sitting in an uncomfortable seat for too long, I could hardly move, and my nerves were just like tingling all over, my whole nervous system was just so uncomfortable. I did not feel right. I was feeling panicked and just really gross. And I'm trying to just be quiet and enjoy, um, you know, the kids' special moment. And um, so I stayed and, you know, sat there through it. Couldn't even carry the crock pot out. I was in so much pain. And this was a Tuesday night. So someone else had to carry the crock pot out to the car for me. And I'm like, what is going on here? Something is really wrong. And I called in the next day, uh, the spiritual teacher I was working with, she had a Wednesday radio show. And I called in the next day and got right on as the first caller and said, I've been raising my vibration, I think. Um, I think that's what's going on, but I'm in a lot of pain. Um, I need some help. And she took one look at me on the radio and said, you've blown out your central nervous system. You have blown out your system. Um, this needs, you know, emergency repairs. Let me just do, you know, the five minutes I can give you now on air. Um, but you need to book a session. So I got a session within two days um, and just, you know, had to limp through um, until then. And the session was magnificent because what I learned was when we raise our vibration, we get this tremendous healing. So she helped that final piece coming because I hadn't quite been able to hook into the healing myself. We get an ascended master or an angel who helps us on a daily basis once we've moved up to 5D because we've we then moved into our life purpose. And we can really begin helping others, begin helping the animals, begin helping Earth, whatever we're here to do. So um, she helped me rebuild it and helped all the upper chakras above my head come in and got me more grounded too. So we rebuilt my entire uh, chakra system that day. But that's what that's what my experience was. Um, so Greg, over to you, uh, please. Some more safe and sane ways to do that because. Mine had a fair bit of drama to it, and I certainly was not able to uh, maintain it. Yeah, so, well, I, I think you brought something up I, I hadn't planned on <clears throat> mentioning, but you know, when, when your ascension symptoms uh, turn into physical issues, <laughs> then it's good to, um, you know, if you go to the ER, they're gonna think you're nuts or something, you know, that, that, that's not gonna be helpful. It's, it's best to find um, a healer. Somebody, a good healer. Yeah. yeah. And you've got two of them here <laughs> that you can contact if that does happen. Um, so, uh, you, you know, to, to clear whatever block is going on, whatever internal uh, energetic um, imbalance or even kind of an injury that's going on that, that will clear you. That's, that's definitely, so find, find somebody. You can start with us. And if we're not the right fit for you, we can recommend you to somebody potentially. Absolutely. So, so that's the first thing. But um, once, so, you know, once you've, it, it, once you've achieved your um, moment of, of vibration raising, you'll remember what that feels like. And you can continue going up, but, you know, you'll probably experience it, as we've mentioned in previous episodes, um, moments of refocusing or whatever, where things all of a sudden just start to feel lousy. Feel physically, emotionally, or even spiritually, you'll feel out of tune or whatever. So what are some things that you can do to try to manage against that, you know, so that you can um, continue? And of course, we talked, to, we did a whole episode on a spiritual practice. So that, that's, that's one thing. And it's, it's one of those things where we're not saying it, um, we're not wasting our breath with this. <laughs> like we, we, you know, Wendy and I both have, have them. And I feel the difference when I don't do a spiritual practice. It's one of those things I call it spiritual hygiene, or it's like, if you're going to do something to, you know, if you watch your food intake so that you don't gain weight, if you do any kind of a physical exercise so that you can tone your body, why don't you do something for your spiritual self? <laughs> because it's the same idea. Keep your spiritual hygiene clean, toned. You, you, it's once you get to a certain point in your vibration and you want to keep it that way, that's, it's, you got to keep doing that. 
So the other thing is what you expose yourself to every day. This is the other thing. So I equate this to, yeah, I, I'd written in my notes, be careful what you ingest. It doesn't just mean what you eat, but I will start with that. It's what you expose yourself to. And then I'll get into more detail about that. But what, let's start with what you ingest physically, what you eat. I have had people, and, and I, this has happened to me, I used to be able, excuse me, to eat things like fast food, McDonald's, et cetera. Um, it didn't bother me. If, if I eat that stuff now, it lays me out. <laughs> like I, if I ate a McDonald's burger, if I slugged down a, a diet soda or something, um, I would be on the couch for a while um, because my physical vibration now, it's not because I'm an awesome person now all of a sudden, but my, my, literally my energy is not lined up with that low vibration food. And if that sounds elitist or whatever, I, I, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's a reality. It really is true. So you'll start to notice your diet will change. In fact, I've, one of the things I've done is I've started intermittent fasting. So there, there's actually re research that shows that the less food you eat, um, you're a healthier person. Because you know, the point is, when you put um, food in your body, um, there's two things that, that go on. There's, there are impurities in, in most foods, but even if you're eating clean, your body is reacting to that food like it's a foreign invader, even if it's good food. And it spends half your energy just digesting that food. So this is what you know the ancients have, had realized that if you can give yourself a break from eating food for a while, <laughs> you can have kind of supernatural experiences or, or whatever. You can, your body also starts to repair itself. So I, I'm a part of a, a group called Master Fast System and they've, they do these 108 day fasts where their whole philosophy is your body, when it doesn't have to be burdened with the task of digesting food, it will just start physically repairing. Your, your bones didn't quite set right, uh, you know, parasites will start coming out of you. It's, it's an amazing thing. So, you know, that's not something you wanna go into without some sort of help. I, I just wanna warn, you know, don't try this at home without some expert help. But, uh, in, you know, intermittent fa fasting is a little less dramatic. And I currently do a, an 18-hour, 24-hour fast where basically I just eat one meal a day. And, um, you know, I, drink, I, t I take a lot of supplements and um, I, 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 eat, I drink, you know, good foods. I try not to eat anything that's processed. So let's talk about that. Processed foods are the worst thing you can eat. I don't care what your diet is, whether you're a, a, a vegetarian or meat eater or, or an, you know, an omnivore, anything that is not prepared by human hands has been shown to have a lower vibration for you. So anything you buy that's packaged, um, more and that hasn't been touched by human hands, it, it, once you get higher in your vibration, you're gonna start rejecting that kind of food. So preparing your own meals, growing your own food, these are things that you know, I suddenly became more interested in as my vibration changed. Um, so just be mindful of that. Um, so what you're putting into your body physically has, has a big bearing on, 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 on keeping your vibration high. The second thing is what you visually digest. So we're, you know, I, I'm not even gonna make a joke about it. It's, it's at the point now where, I mean, we're on social media now, so. Social media is a big thing. Television, you know, maybe 20 years ago was a big thing. It's funny because my daughter's just turned 17. She never watches television. But that was a bigger deal in our generation where, you know, programming, literally programming, is going on. Um, and it's, it's at the point now, and, you know, I don't want to start sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but there's some things that have happened recently uh, since 2012 and, and even beyond where, there's certain le legislations. One is called the Smith-Mund Act that was repealed in 2012, which has given um, full permission for the U.S. government to use propaganda in the news stream, use propaganda on its own citizens. So, it, you know, if you're watching network television, you are watching propaganda. And that's the truth. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. You're And... So that's going on. In social media, there's a lot of other things going on as well where you're seeing the divisions happen. You know, 
people are um, just even in the political structure, either Republican, Republican or Democrat, and you know, never the twain shall meet. Well, you know, that kind of division going on and that kind of arguing going on is not healthy to any sane being. And it's certainly very toxic for somebody who's rising up, you know, in their vibration. So the point is, you know, where I'm getting at is this, is, is to avoid these conflicts. And so if you can stay away from the programming, that's one thing. But if, you know, Wendy and I, part of what we do in our, our business, it, forces us to be on social media, if you can be mindful of what you're, what you're digesting. So, you know, trying to watch uplifting shows, uh, things that expand your mind, these are good things. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of great content. I mean, for me, it's as simple as if I, a YouTube comes to my attention or whatever it might be, a movie's recommended to me or there's a new show, I just simply ask my guides, is this for me? It's yeah. just that simple. And yes, and, and, and you'll feel it intuitively as well, if you're drawn to something or not. Uh, I'll just say this. So I, I just spent some time with a friend of mine who um, he's really into horror shows or, or, and war movies. And I just, and he, we were hanging out. It was like a reunion thing. And we spent the weekend together and he wanted to watch a bunch of movies with me. And he said, and he started pulling up all these zombie movies. Well, this one's funny, he told me. Uh, this is a funny zombie movie. I said, well, are people being beheaded and having their limbs chopped off? Because, you know, my autonomic nervous system doesn't realize the difference <laughs> that it's fake, you know, and it, it, I will react, you know, on a subconscious level that I'm watching somebody get their head chopped off. So, you know, and you will too, but, it, you know, it, it's now at the point where it bothers me and I don't, I don't want to see that. And so I, you know, I'm conscious of that now. So why would, so if we can watch a show that's really funny or uplifting or has a spiritual component to it, I'd rather do that as opposed to watch, even if it's a funny zombie movie, you know? So, you know, he- It's an oxymoron for me, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, there are. One, one is Shaun of the Dead, by the way. <laughs> so, which is actually a funny movie, but you know, people are getting chopped up in that too. Anyway, so that's, that's a big thing. The other thing, of course, is um, toxic people. And, you know, just avoiding conflicts. It's, it's a very similar thing as I, I equate it to an, an avoidance diet. So when, when I help people with Lyme disease, they say, what kind of diets should I be on? And I'll just say, let's start with the elimination <laughs> of things. So, you know, we can get down into what's best for your body. There's actually a certain blood, um, diet called Eat Right for Your Blood Type that gets down into to genetics. But let's just start with this. These are things that you should just avoid, no matter if you're a vegetarian or a carnivore right. or whatever. So it's the same with people, you know. Are you, the people that who are around you now, are they making you your better self? Or are you arguing with them? Um, and are they making you your worst self, your smaller self, you, you know, that's, so you have a choice in your life to be with these people or not. And even, even if they're your relatives, I'm telling you, so um, you'll start to gravitate towards the people that make you feel good and won't. Some of it won't even be conscious because some of your friends will just go away. <laughs> you know? right. so some of your well, friends- our interests just don't align anymore. You right. know, like your right. example of the friend who just really, he's at the point where he enjoys the zombie movies and the horror movies and you know, that, that's, that, that's fine. That, that's I know, just yeah, I hate to say, I mean, right. There's a, there's a reason why we're not hanging out <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And we had this reunion, and which was great. It yeah. was a great reunion. But yeah, we're on different paths, and that's and and we both talked about it actually that weekend. Good, you know, that's you know, great. I, I told him I said I'm I'm a lot different than I was you know 30 years ago when we first met, and um, he you know he respected that. So, um, so nice. that's the point is just you know being around certain people. Now the next thing on this this journey is to so. You know, I'm saying avoid things that bring you down. And, and it's funny because, you know, when I first came back from Brazil after going through my spiritual experience of, of a healing down there, they, they told us about this. They literally said, you've been up in orbit <laughs> down, down here in Brazil. You've been in a supernatural place. Let's just face it. You're going, you're going down into re-entry. 
right? Reentry into the heaviness of Earth. And you know, what happens to space vehicles that come down too fast? They burn up. <laughs> they burn up upon reentry. So let's talk about your reentry plan. It's got to be nice and gentle. Or and people get the bends when they're deep sea diving and you know come if up. They too come quickly, up too fast. Same, exactly. same thing. Same idea. So they said, you know, the first thing they said, which was surprising to me, was exactly what I said earlier. They said, stop watching horror movies. I said, really? That specific? They're like, yes. It makes it scares you. It, it makes you feel bad. The gory movies, you know, are are ma normalizing death. You know, that's you know, a horrible death. You don't want to watch that stuff. And then they talked about the toxic people and so forth. So, um, so they basically they also showed us the uh, the power of attraction. They showed um, the, and the power of attention. They showed us some videos down there of uh, Esther Hicks, uh, you know, the Abraham Hicks, and which is, you know, the showing you that your thoughts create energy and broadcast things into your life that, based upon your vibration. So, you know, if you're thinking horrible things, you're gonna experience horrible things and, and that kind of thing. So I came back from that. And I basically, you know, I was a changed person. I told my wife, I'm not watching horror movies. I'm not, thinking about anything neg negative. I'm not watching the news anymore. That was another thing they said, don't watch the news. Right. Um, and she's like, well, how are you going to, you know, find out what's happening in the world? I'm like, ah, what's happening in the world is what I'm watching <laughs> myself. I don't need somebody to interpret the news. You for can me. seek information, which is different than yes. subjecting yourself to news programming. I don't There's have to difference. be pounded with the fear propaganda that yeah. you get. Yeah. In the sky is falling every day so right. um anyway so she said oh so i guess you don't ever want to hear any bad news anymore and and one day <laughs> something had happened there was a bomb scare at my daughter's school and i was at work and then um everybody was home early so i, I came home and I, I said why is everybody home early today oh nothing nothing what do you mean well finally i got out of her that there was a bomb scare and i said uh, why didn't you tell me I thought you didn't want to hear about anything negative. I said, well, that's different. <laughs> that was an emergency. And, I, and it, it, I, you know, thankfully it wasn't negative, but I have to reframe what I'm telling you here about, you know, the things that I've, you know, obviously if something comes into your life that you need to act on, you know, and it could potentially be negative, that's, that's unavoidable stuff. Okay. That's, that's the stuff you need to deal with. And that's the other thing I wanted to bring up. Those things are going to happen in your life. So as much as you're, you know, trying to abide by the avoidance diet of, you know, I don't want to watch, I don't want to bring anything unnecessarily negative into my life through the things that I consume or, or through my own thoughts and vibrations that I'm broadcasting. These things will happen. And we did an entire episode on it called refocusing. Sometimes your guides are a part of that. Right. <laughs> they, they throw right. a barricade in your life because you're too comfortable or you're too much, you think I'm done, you know, and you're never done. You're, so, you're being complacent because we can't, we can't bury our heads in the sand. We've got to be uh, building our coping strategies so that when we're tested, we're ready. Right. So one book that I would like to recommend uh, about all of this, about keeping your vibration right for raising it and then keeping it raised it's a book written by Michael Singer that was, um, that was recommended to me years ago when I was first going through this, this kind of stuff. I've heard, vibration was high, but I was having these weird bouts of um, uncertainty and depression. And somebody uh, who was also on a spiritual path, it was a healer, said, you need, because I, I said something like, I just want to go out in the middle of the woods, you know, or, and put up a, a, a mini building and um you know i'd have it off the grid and just meditate all day long and she said you need to read michael singer's book called the surrender experiment because that's literally what he did he literally did that so his goal was to unplug from society and what better way to avoid toxic people never see any people anymore right sounds sounds pretty cool and let's why not go out in the woods and experience nature every day and and uh you know, meditate every day. That was his goal. Well, guess what? Life has different plans for you. 
And that experiment's also been done beautifully hundreds of years ago and many times. I mean, on Walden Pond, Henry David Thoreau, it's yeah. the same experiment. Yeah, exactly. So um, what happened to him was he did raise his vibration and, and he experienced something, you know, close to Nirvana where he, and, you know, part of raising your vibration is realizing that the voice in your head isn't you. But if you're witnessing the voice in your head talking to yourself, that's really you. He, he explained the difference in that. And he was able to pull himself out and witness himself having these experiences. He was able to turn off for the most part. It's hard to keep the monkey mind from going, but he was able, his idea was he wanted to destroy that, <laughs> that voice, that monkey mind. And, and uh, you know, his teachers end up telling him, part of that's you. Okay, so you don't want to ever destroy anything about yourself completely, but if you, yeah. You can't eradicate the ego. It's part yeah, of us. Yeah, exactly. But uh, he describes, so that, that that's, it's a great book on uh, giving the mechanics of keeping a really high vibration. And then he talked about how he was, he was teaching college classes and stuff like that and keeping his vibration so high. One day he walked into a college class. This is not, you know, it's an illustration of how far you can go. He walked in, he taught the whole class. He didn't, he forgot to put a shirt on. <laughs> he forgot he was, to do what? Put, he forgot to put a shirt on. Oh. So he walked into the class, he taught the class, he heard these, giggling going on and people murmuring. He's like, ah, he was so unplugged from oh. the real world that um, when it was over, somebody said, what, what's going on with the, you know, no shirt? Oh my goodness. You know, he was so um, living his life outside of his, you know, conscious being. So anyway, stuff started to pile up in his life and eventually he started having the opposite of the experience he had set up for himself. He, he started a software company that, multi-million dollar company, all this fantastic stuff happened to him, you know, where he kind of achieved what we, you would call the American dream. And then the refocusing started. Uh, somebody betrayed him in his company and set him up for uh, indictments and, you know, illegal actions that he didn't do. And oh in the middle of all this, his multi-million dollar company was, was literally, the government said, you need to stop your business because we need to investigate everything about you. And while this was going on, he went back to his little cabin in the woods because he had a you know, big house that he was living in. He went back to his cabin in the woods and he started writing The Untethered Soul, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a fantastic book about unplugging. And so both of these books I'd highly recommend, The Surrender Experiment and The Untethered Soul by, by Michael Singer. They were pivotal books in my life that helped me understand the mechanics of raising your vibration the untethered soul you could read and I read it on a plane flight, <laughs> you know, and a couple hours and it was, it was done. It gives you the mechanisms, the, the steps on how to untether your soul for one thing to, to untether your, your consciousness and to keep it from being bogged down into the daily grind of, of living. And, uh, and anyway, and, and, and giving you the focus, like when, life is battering you or if you're being attacked, you know, um, how to stay present and how to stay uh, untethered. <laughs> so anyway, we're, we're, we're at the uh, end of our hour now. So ho hopefully we've given you all some, some ideas and some tools and r experiences that we've related that show you that, you know, you're not going crazy. You're not depressed. Um, and that, you haven't failed, you know, in your spiritual arc. <laughs> There's, it's, and I don't even think it's a spiritual arc. It's always, it's kind of like that, <laughs> you know, where you're kind of going up and down, up and down, still going up. But anyway, that's uh, hopefully, you know, if you have it. Oh, actually, and be before I do the wind up to sign off, I just wanted to see if there's any um, questions here. Um, well, one question for you, Wendy, is there, there's, you mentioned a gentleman early on, uh, um, in the broadcast, is this the gentleman you wrote about, about in your book? Uh, Shawnee Jennings is asking, she's currently yes. reading it. Yes. It, it is, it is. Yes, okay. that had the soul contract with me to wake me up spiritually. Yes, yes. so yes. he is in the, he is um, in the first two books actually, yes. Uh, awesome, awesome, so yes. you can read, read those. Um, Mary Andromeda asks, have you ever experienced energy coming in sideways across your body? 
I've experienced energy every which way to Sunday. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. So just for me, it was just a matter of getting comfortable and knowing that I was only going to have experiences that were for my benefit and that were good for me because I, uh, my, my aura, my energy, my whatever was just too permeable to low vibration energy. And that was part of my growth was I spent two full years in 2013 and 2014 with almost daily psychic attacks. And I would not wish that on anyone. Um, and it wasn't just me being a worry ward or having anxiety because multiple people were confirming them and would contact me and say, whoa, you got hit last night. Are you okay? Can I help you? So it was not, you know, sorry, it wasn't just my imagination. That's certainly not a lot of people's path. It was a bit of an unusual path, but it was part of mine. Um, and I just, it's just so delightful to be in a place where I've raised my vibration that uh, that's no longer an, an issue for me. Like Greg said, it doesn't mean that I don't fall down and don't have life burst into flames and just be a big old mess. Um, but you, you rebuild on higher ground and as you get more experienced with this, you realize each time it's easier and easier and easier. And it, and you know, it was meant to happen and we did plan for a lot of it or contract it, if not the specifics, um, of the car accident, the disease, the layoff, the whatever. Um, it, it's, it's, it's our choice. Are we going to go through it or are we going to grow through it? And I think that's what we're talking about is how do you sustain the growth? And it's right. important to understand too, once you reach that lovely place of 5D where you're in that peace, love and joy, you can raise your vibration again. You're not stuck there. That's not the end, that's just the beginning. And you don't have to go sequentially once you reach five. Um, I raised my vibration to seven. And I was, honestly, I was aiming for 12. And maybe that's another program to talk about what some of the dimensions are. But we're all capable of it. I am nothing special. Um, you know, we are all capable of this. Um, so thank you so much to everyone for being here. Uh, Greg, thank you for your wonderful um, insights and balancing, um, balancing this um, stories and experiences that we're sharing. And I'm Wendy Rose Williams, and I can be reached at my website is wendyrosewilliams.com. And if you would like to consider doing a session with me, you're welcome to request a complimentary 15-minute phone appointment via the website, and we can discuss um, whether I may be of service to you at this time. So Greg, how can people reach you and do a session with you? At gregkirk.com, just click on the contact button. You can also reach me through the limerecoveryclinic.com. Thank you all. We'll see you in two weeks. Enjoy, Thanks, everyone. Uh, enjoy bye the rest bye. of your weekend. Bye-bye.